Coho salmon, also known as silvers, are arguably the best salmon you can hook on the fly. They, man, they just take flies with abandon. They crush them. I've had so many instances where I've watched my clients fly, stripping it in, and just seen a coho just building a wake behind it, chasing it down. Oh my gosh, it's just heart stopping. Uh, and it, when coho come back into Puget Sound, uh, they will feed really aggressively and they're feeding on sand lance and herring and smelt and all sorts of, of stuff like that. Uh, and it can be fast and furious action. When they start to stage up at the mouth of rivers in those estuaries, they will hang out and wait for a while. And those waiting period coho, also known as staging salmon and sometimes referred lovingly to as lockjawed salmon can be pretty tough to get to bite. Now the tactics that we use out in the salt water for those really aggressive feeding fish is a little bit different than when they're staged up. Recently, I did a video on those saltwater salmon and what flies we use and tactics we use to uh, target those fish. And today I am going to help dial in your coho game with going over staging salmon flies. And so I got a great little assortment that I've put together here. I wanna go through these for you right now. Now when I'm on the water, especially when I'm guiding, I have a lot of flies that I bring along. I have all sorts of fly boxes that I've brought here. Sometimes when we're out fishing, uh, we'll actually hook coho on cutthroat flies and that can be really cool. Um, but a lot of the flies that we use specifically for coho will also use for chums. And so for staging chums and staging coho, these are some great flies that we're gonna go over. Just to show some of my boxes, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of chartreuse in there, a lot of green. This is definitely a box I bring with me when I am uh, going after chums. Some of these other boxes, more natural colors. Now, I got a bunch of flies here. The first fly I'm gonna go over is called the Hot Wire Comet. Now, this fly is, you might be thinking, you're using a fly that small for salmon, you're crazy. Well, uh, it works. <laughs> so, this fly's great when those fish, fish are staged up. It's got a wire body on it with some bead chain eyes. And because it's really sparse, this fly actually sinks pretty quick. And, uh, and so uh, there, this one right here, the orange and yellow, I love this color combo. There's a uh, like a copper and red that is also great. Um, I mean, the pink is kind of the obvious choice for a lot of people. And then we have uh, a couple more. That there's one that is chartreuse in purple, another one that's chartreuse in black. And, um, and those chartreuse in black, the chartreuse in purple, great for chums, but also great for, uh, for coho. There's been many times fishing in, especially in early November, targeting uh, staged up chums. Uh, there's coho mixed in with those chums and they eat the fly. The second fly is the Croft Spider, and this is an old classic from Mike Croft uh, from Tacoma. And uh, there, he would tie this fly with this golden pheasant crest, these yellow kind of fibers here, and um, an orange hackle. And we've messed around with some different colors as well and have found them to be very successful. So we've also done a, uh, a pink with the golden pheasant crest as well as a black with the golden pheasant crest, a black and yellow. And so a little bit of a lighter fly. When we're fishing these flies, many times we're fishing with an intermediate line if the fish are hanging a little bit deeper or intermediate tip line. Sometimes we're just fishing a floating line and we'll just put on a long leader. So it depends on where the fish are at and that kind of depends on the stage of the tide and um, and then the fly that we're using and how we wanna fish the depth of the fly. It, the critical part is getting the fly in front of the fish. The next fly is Dave's Ghost Bugger. We did a video not too long ago on essential cutthroat flies and this is one of those flies. That hook that we tie it on is a size 10 shrimp hook and it's just a little bit small for a coho, but we would have, the coho would just eat that thing. And so we scaled up the fly for uh, for the fall salmon season. And so this one's on a size six. It's fairly large for uh, for cutthroat. So please don't fish that for cutthroat. But uh, but the size ten is great for cutthroat. But this is an exceptional fly for coho and for chums. And I love the white and pink. Uh, the orange with this this UV estes is is killer. Love that one. And then the chartreuse and white. That's also a great fly, especially for chums. Okay, the fourth fly is the sparkle shrimp, and uh, this is 
I don't know if the fish really see this as a shrimp, but um, yeah, maybe, I don't know. But it's a really cool fly, it works really well. Uh, it has, with that kind of heavy hackle on it, it slows the sink rate down a little bit and there's no other way other than the hook. And so this fly fishes a little bit different in the column than some of the other flies mentioned, which can be really, uh, really effective when those fish are, are pretty shallow uh, and, and you don't need to get down. Okay, before I share the last fly, which is probably my favorite one as well, uh, if you're finding this video helpful, give it a like so others can find it too. That would be super appreciated, thank you. And if you're brand new to saltwater fishing and you really want to minimize your frustration and be successful out on the water, you need to check out our Puget Sound Saltwater Clinic. There's a link down below. Uh, this is a great online uh, course. It's several hours. It will give you everything you need to know about tides and current and rods, reels, flies, different species, all sorts of stuff. It's great, check it out. We want you to be successful out on the water. Okay, so for our fifth and final fly, this is the Staging Salmon Series Fly. I originally named this one Kibbles and Bits, and then we have Puppy Chow and a couple other, uh, Scooby Snacks is the other fun one. Uh, but really, I designed it uh, first for chums, and, um, and it was in this color. This is the original, and there's a little bit of uh, like rabbit hair for the wing with uh, some some uh, flash underneath it. We actually have a video online on YouTube on how to tie this fly as well as a material kit as well. So um, so check that out. But um, but I came up with this one first, and not only was it great on chums, but it was great on coho. So then I I experimented around a little bit and I tied up uh, a couple other colors and we've experimented with a bunch of different colors. But the fuchsia one has been great, this fuchsia purple, and then there's this kind of shrimp pink and orange one as well. Uh, and I like to fish these with a long leader. Uh, you know, not, not super light tippet, but I'll taper it down to maybe like 12 pound or 10 pound. Uh, a lot of times I'll use fluoro especially uh, when, when it's just like crystal clear water. Uh, but can be fish on an intermediate line, but man, this is, this is a good one. You should check this one out. So anyways, that's the rundown on staging coho flies that you need to have in your box for the fall when they're staged up. We actually have all of these together in an assortment. So check out the link for the assortment below. They're also on our website. We have a lot of different flies on there. And thanks for checking out this video. We'll see you in the next one.